yeah so um this is actually the second snow work video coming and now this won't be so much about the practical part of it so i won't be telling much of what i'm doing here you can just look and see for yourself if you're interested to know more you can also look the first snow work video and there's also a video about removing snow off the roof with a wire i think it's my most popular youtube video there's a video of fluffy snow and things um, now i just want to think out loud a little bit about like the survival perspective of what i'm doing here so obviously when we think about survival we need to be really really aware of what do we use our energy resources time and lives for and with resources i include um, not only fossil fuels um, and and fossil resources to build snow plows and stuff but also our time uh, our money yeah, the money that we use so as you can imagine just like when you look at the first video in this line in this little snow work series which was 80 minutes of snow work and you can see it's a little bit of work having to do this a couple of times sometimes per day per week for sure many times over the winter oh, you see some ski tracks from me there um, you can already assume or estimate that it's quite some energy that I'm using so since there's no need for me to use a car I've decided to shape my life around bicycle speed and bicycle distances and public transport and hitchhiking I only need to make a path that is wide enough for the bike and the bicycle trailer to fit through if I would still have a car which I used to have at some point I would need to clear a much wider path and that would maybe be so much work and I know that some people do it like this that they use some machines for that so um, these how do you call it? Lumilinko. Uh, um, snow. What is it called? You know, they are blow, blowing the snow to the sides. Um, I don't know what they're called. Some people use even these leaf blowers to move snow. And then, of course, there's all kinds of tractors and snow plows and everything of all kinds of sizes to do this snow work instead of using your muscles and using food as an energy source so and that's quite a lot of energy altogether when you think of you, know, you can calculate the kilojoules how much does it take to to move all this weight around and to build the machines and build the tools and so quite something coming together there and especially when you're talking about big areas like parking lots and streets and highways and you know, all kinds of areas where we want to move with vehicles around so I don't know how many thousands of tons of snow just the city where I'm living in is moving and then the question is like why are we doing this right from the perspective of the survival of our species every use of energy time money resources should be primarily serving the well-being of life in all its diversity right we shouldn't use energy if it's not totally necessary we cannot really justify this since the world is ecocentric nature is the only place on earth 
and the same rules apply to any living species so if we are inefficient if we use more energy than we really really need then we'll be thrown off the planet it's suicidal and so the big question is what do we use this energy for right do we need to plow a road that is wide enough to to i don't know move like i don't know three or four lanes or is it enough to have you know one bus passing through and the ambulance and the truck and the occasional smaller vehicle and then with the additional possibility to just have like some spots where it's possible to pass each other you know so basically mobility is something that we use to take care of our six survival priorities right it's a but in itself it's, it's not a priority you know yes we do have to move but ideally as small areas as possible so then the question comes up why are we moving around so much right like if i can i live like i don't know what is it four kilometers from the next supermarket seven kilometers from the city center and if i would only use food from the supermarket it would basically be enough to i don't know make a trip once or twice a week either by bus or by bicycle trader that's totally sufficient but for some reason we want to have you know do hobbies and oh well i don't know I'm not wanting to go into this blame game here because we slipped into this right we we were born into this situation where it is so to speak normal and advertised to and legal to move around right so if you're born in a family where there is a car then of course you you're maybe more likely to pick up a hobby or i mean like having hobbies is like such a such a privilege of our spoiled so-called developed world um like yeah and so if you are used to having a car then you accept for example also work which is further away and our whole society has grown so used to cars that if you are unemployed now in finland and want to get unemployment benefits then the unemployment officers the services they say you need to apply to i think at least four jobs a month or something and up to 100 kilometers away from your home which is quite interesting because how do you do this 100 kilometer away from your home can, can we expect to move there or can we expect to commute there and if yes how right if you're living in a city where you have good access to public transport that might not be a problem but if you're living somewhere on the countryside there might be places where the next bus stop is 20 kilometers away and not at here right here yeah there you see one of these big snow movers yeah a lot of heavy machinery a couple of tons just to move water around just to move water around <laughs> can we justify it hmm. we better find reasons to justify it we better figure out how to see this as an investment how to make it a serious investment because i believe it's very possible to to survive with a lot less of this i mean i can see in my own life that it's like quite easy to live without so much of this right like so many people i know who live in the city center or 
further uh, closer from here to the city center who say I need a car and on the other hand I know people like a whole family who are living I think twice as far away from the city center as I live who are not having a car they so far got by with bicycles and tandems and I guess ride sharing and public transport so it's totally possible and not only is it possible it's also extremely beneficial right for example have to do less snow work or um, don't need to um, earn earn money to pay for a car right a car is a pretty expensive thing when you look at the kilometer price like to own and get rid of it and run it and buy it and pay insurance and service and cleaning it and whatever like I think here in Finland it's calculated something like 40 something cent per kilometer I believe it's over 50 cent per kilometer if we take other costs into account and of course then there's a lot of costs that are still not taken into account that would make it even more expensive right like you know the, the cost of uh, like the health impacts um, stuff that comes with cars that you know like so many side effects of this whole car car life heavyweight mobility and yeah so it's it's very beneficial to to shape life around bicycle speed and bicycle distances so it's cheaper you have more free time because you need, need less money um here more outside you can stop wherever you want on the way you're more connected with the with the natural surroundings and with the neighbors and <coughs> and obviously you have um a vehicle that is easy to service that you can service yourself where you're not dependent on fossil or high impacting infrastructures and high impacting systems um, very fragile systems at that interdependent systems so it's extremely beneficial to to look into shaping life around bicycles and then it's also for the vast majority of us extremely possible and kind of just by the way it's also very necessary if we are serious about life and survival um, and of course if we are not serious about life and survival then we would be considered as suicidal and still when we ask each other are you suicidal I believe most people would say no I hope so and still so many things of what we accept as normal and what we advertise and legalize is really you know suicidal it's like like negligent suicide <laughs> and these are many many things right from from uh, buying new stuff to sitting by the computer playing games using resources and energy that don't help us and that's of course the games do some good storytelling and some good learning um, yeah good bus network here very grateful and happy city of UN so it's a good bus network um, mostly also quite good for cycling this road is not so good for cycling there's no cycle paths not even marked on the road um, but, but I actually like cycling on this road because it's not boring <laughs> in winter it's not, it's not at all boring hmm. but, yeah, it's a bit challenging oh, yeah. yeah you see it's really heavy snow <laughs> Oh. 
Yeah, the snow plow has moved the snow from the road into the driveway. And you see, I, I clear this area a little bit bigger. Like, because some people, when they come visiting here, they come by car. Um, and then it's good that they don't need to park in the bus stop or on the road. And it's not much effort. Okay, so anything else about the survival aspects of snow work? <laughs> well, I wonder how much snow work our ancestors here did. You know, those who, for the most part of human history here, survived without electricity and fossils. How did they do it? I think they just stayed put a lot and used skis to get around. Uh, just clever adapting to the circumstances. Just use skis. Don't dig through the snow, don't move the snow. It's like it's a wasteful use of energy and resources. And then like <laughs> I, I mean there have been no oh, videos of and pictures of snow being moved not only by trucks but also by helicopters for people to ski on are we that stupid really are we that stupid or are we just so unaware or or helpless or paralyzed or unknowing i don't know what it is unbelievable Unbelievable. Not very smart of us. Yeah. Yeah, and also here in Joensu, or actually in Kontiolahti, kind of the next town from here, there's this big biathlon stadium where snow is brought and stored during the wind during the summer under big tarps and then it's put onto the tracks in the early autumn so that we can enjoy another hobby that doesn't doesn't really help the survival of our species I wonder what this truck is doing. Ah, that was the neighbor. Yeah, using a lot of resources just to move water. Some of it necessary, most of it not. And some of it even only for fun. It's <laughs> I think it's, I've been talking long enough now. Have a good time. See you later.